What's going on guys? Welcome back to Grave Uncut and we're back with another Grave Uncut movie reveal. Today Nino Dios mio I'm your puppy now. Well, with that little skit aside, today we saw The Curse of La Llorona. What's good? What are you talking about? I just came. Like, I was a few Listen, minutes Listen, we don't, we don't need to hear what you just <laughs> came on, okay? No, 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 I'm not talking about that. That's my private life. But, I just came back. You know, you was up here, you started recording without me. How dare you? A little offended. Tiny bit. Poquito. But anyway, <laughs> we just saw The Curse of La Llorona. Bang, bang. Yeah. And now you can take over, Joe. Oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me take over my own video. Great. So as Reyes just said, we just watched The Curse of La Llorona. I'm actually impressed that you actually said it right this time. I know. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with uh, the characters. Reyes, what did you think? I felt like a lot of the characters were actually pretty well done, surprisingly. I had a lot of doubts about this film to begin with, so when you see the characters develop, and the thing is that the way how the movie is, you don't really need that much character development. You know, it's one of those stories that you kind of just like take for what it is. And the characters actually, I feel like, really embody how the movie is. Like it's more character driven than actually story written. As far as my uh, viewpoint on the characters, oh, the characters were very well done. They actually had one of the characters from Breaking Bad, if you don't remember, if you remember the, the uh, series. Who? Uh, Raph Raphael, I believe his name was. Oh my god! <laughs> didn't you didn't realize that, that, did you? No, I didn't. That's awesome. <laughs> that Once you said that, I'm, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> did not know that. Yeah, so if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, you'll see uh, this guy, Raphael. But yeah, Raphael was in Breaking Bad. That's awesome. He was, uh, if you, anybody that's familiar with Breaking Bad, uh, the guy Raphael from the movie played a drug dealer in Breaking Bad. And honest to God, I was, like when I saw that, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I didn't even notice. But that's awesome. And that's, you know, again, what makes the movie very well is the characters. And the fact that, that when I looked at him, I even realized he was from Breaking Bad. I'm just like... Yeah, but then again, how long has it been since you last seen Breaking Bad? Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. That's probably the only reason why you didn't realize it. I mean, I mean, before I got jumped off to the tangent as far as the guy Raphael, the characters were very well done, with the exception of maybe a few of them. I mean, it's not that they weren't believable, it's just that the context, that the role that they played in the movie it could have been tweaked just a little bit. Which characters are you talking about? In particularly, um, now, I want to... Give spoiler a four. Free. This is gonna be completely spoiler free. If there's any reference to any characters from the movie, it's just gonna be reference to the movie. It's not gonna give away anything as far as the ending. Uh, the issue that one of the issues that I had with one of the characters, it was the uh, mother of the two boys. Which if you, two boys? no, if you remember from the, yeah, from the, the very very beginning. Okay. Oh, the the one that Patricia. Patricia, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, don't get me wrong, she played her role well, it's just that the way she, the way the character was executed could have been a lot yeah. better. I, I think yeah. so, too. Um, I'll, I'll leave it out, because it's spoiler free, but I, I kind of see where you're coming from with that, but, you know, also, like, th there's a few complaints I have with that character, but who's the second one, then? The second one would have to, honestly, that would actually have to be the, um... The woman, the woman uh, that was working with the CPS, Child Protective Services. Oh, uh, her yeah. character seemed relatively pointless. Yeah, it's hard because I don't want to go into the story format right no, now. No, no, no. We yeah. I'm just going based off like th those are the two like main ones that stuck out. Yeah. No, nah, I definitely see where you're coming from, and I, I kind of get why. Like without you saying, it, I kind of figured why. But because as far like I mean I'm I'm just gonna go into like some minor detail regarding uh, the CPS worker. It's like she was there, but there was really no reason for her to be there. Yeah, she like it, it, the one line that came out of her mouth from yeah, the movie was like she, like, like she's like, just so you know, I don't really want to be here. Yeah, and then you don't see it for the rest. And of the that movie. was it. Yeah, 
I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's... But this is, like, from the very, very beginning of the movie, where it's just like, all right... And the, I, the one thing I find hysterical out of everything, you don't see anything from the CPS ever again from that point on. <laughs> Are they pointless? <laughs> so I honestly think this is. I mean, I get, I get the story behind the uh, mother of the boy and the girl. She worked for CPS, which kind of translates to the rest of the story from mm -hmm. the from Patricia and her kids. But other than that, CPS, there was no, no other CPS related stuff. It was just no. kind of there, and then it, it was there. It was there as a jumping yeah. off point, and that's basically to the extent of what that was. I, I'm kind of not mad about that, to be honest. Oh no, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying I'm mad about it. I'm just saying it just seemed like that one character from oh, yeah, CPS no, was there was no, there was no reason for her at all. Of course, I definitely want to jump in real quick, aka co-host Ray's World TV. Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Short plug. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into one of the things that I feel like most movie reviews don't talk about, and especially since this is a horror film, let's talk about the atmosphere. Which we don't have to go too much depth on it. But I felt the atmosphere was kind of all over the place towards the end. There were some parts that, that were joking. And like, I didn't expect that from the movie. Especially how severe the situation was. Mm. You know, like, you're dealing with a situation where like, life or death. And I understand that, you know, some people could like, say jokes out of like, nervousness. Or like, you know, just them like, oh, they don't know how to react. But it just kind of felt out of place with some of these jokes. It was kind of like, oh, okay, that's there. I could kind of get why, you know, the strongest character, which was Raphael, he was the strongest character. And, like, I could kind of get why he was joking to a certain degree because, you know, like, he's very well knowledgeable on the situation at hand, you know, and he knows what he's doing. And, like, then you have, like, the mother saying some few jokes, and I'm just like... Well, Why? I mean, as far as just a break, break you know where from the mother's from Mexico. No, like what other movie she's played? Oh, I have no idea. No. Scooby Doo. Was she Scooby Doo? Was she Daphne? I mean, one the girl with the yeah. Oh shit! Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so we have Raphael <laughs> from Breaking Bad, and we got Daphne from Scooby Doo. Holy I shit! I thought you guys knew that. No, I did not <laughs> catch on to that at all. <laughs> But anyway, that, that's at least how I felt about the atmosphere for the movie. Would you Wait, so is there any characters that you recognize from the movie from something else? <laughs> I think the atmosphere was actually really, was decent. I'm gonna touch base on what you mentioned as far as the joking bits. As far as Raphael's character making the joking bits, I think that was more toward getting the kids to relax in the situation that they were in, even though that situation was fucked. As far as the joking scenes from the mother, what uh, what we what what is exactly we referencing on that? Oh, I can't say it without doing a swear. Oh, right, 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 right. Wait, wait, actually, yes, I can. Yes, I can. So they're doing something. I'm gonna leave it as vague as possible, but they're doing something to help them out to further progress. What's the situation at home? So when they're doing the situation, she's like, "Oh, I saw that from a TV show." Oh, right, right, and right, then right. It's like. Um, you kind of went to this guy for help. Again, the mother went up to Raphael, you know. For help. For help. And then you're questioning this guy on his methods. It's like, mm. you have no knowledge of the situation. You hired him. He, it's, you know, and again, like, that's where, like, I felt like the atmosphere of the film kind of threw off a bit. Because it's like, you got a recommendation for this person. You got the person. And now he's doing his thing. And you're questioning him about it. I'm just like, w what? <laughs> you know, it's like the little details will really throw you off when it comes to that. You know, you know, that's just my thing, you know. And again, it, there's not a lot of it. So I'm not going to persecute the movie for mm -hmm. that. It's not all over the place, but it's it got it got to the point. But it's that crucial scenes where I felt like it's where it's the most serious and it should have been the most serious. And that's when they decided to plug in the few jokes here and there. But, you know, again, I just felt like it was out of place. Okay, so besides atmosphere, which, you know, obviously we're starting to get to bits and pieces of how we feel about the story. So let's just dive right into this. The story. Now, obviously, me, Joe, we've described most of this. Described. Can't talk right now. But he's got a feet in penalty. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> but, okay. Fuda. Because... 
we the audience knows how we feel. How yeah. do you feel about the story? Do you think it was very well told off? Especially because I mean, I like the story. The movie just felt boring. You think it was I can't boring? explain. It felt like a short. It I did mean, have boring. it did have a short feel to it. It definitely. W I felt like it. It wasn't short in the sense of length, but I felt like there was a lot of things that could have been done better when it comes to describing things. Because again, this is something which, if you guys don't know, you know, and this isn't a spoiler by the way, because this has been mentioned throughout all advertisement, but this is actually a connection to the Conjuring series. I'm a big fan of the Conjuring series. I don't remember, are you a fan of the yeah, Conjuring series? Yeah, I have watched I've watched the Conjuring series. Annabelle. Kind of yeah, yeah, I've watched every... It was, there was actually just, it's not a major spoiler, but there was a reference to Annabelle. Obviously, because there um is connected to the conjuring series and being such a big fan that's the main reason why i wanted to watch the movie to begin with i felt like it definitely wasn't the weakest when it comes to the conjuring series you know i'm not gonna explain I mean, the jump but it wasn't necessarily the strongest strong. it wasn't exactly i feel like the jump scares are strong though. oh no the, the, there's plenty of jump scares in this movie yeah and like the one thing that i liked when it came to the storytelling of this is that the jump scares weren't, you know, jump scares just to be jump scares. Like, it felt, you know, it felt like it was playing on to how they developed the character of La Llorona to begin with. Mm. I felt like the story, what made me kind of upset was that I was hoping they'll do more of a connection of The Conjuring. You know, how it really ties in. Like, it ties in, but it only ties in for like five minutes. And it's like, pfft, that's it. You know, like, oh, here's your five minutes of why this is connected, and then that's it. it it's like, touch and go, touch and go. But besides besides all of that, the storytelling was okay. <laughs> I honestly really like the story behind I, it. You got to remember. I the like one the idea of the story. Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> as far as the concept behind the movie, it is based off of uh, the actual story of La Llorona, which is basically a folklore that parents tell their kids if they misbehave, La Llorona's gonna come and get you. And it does, I will say the story does justice to the folklore. Yeah, it does. As far as the story itself, as mentioned before regarding the characters and the CPS, they probably could have stuck the, CP, like, the CPS in there, like, little bits and pieces here and there, but not, like, when Raphael was involved. I mean, yes and no. I felt like because, remember, the CPS just got off a case. Yeah. And then they started having, you know, suspicions on another case, you know, without being as vague as possible. But they're having suspicions, and then you see them there, and you gotta, you gotta remember, this movie is kind of... It, it kind of needed to be short because, again, we're only... When you realistic... Like, it's sort of supposed to be a segue to something else. Yes, because when you watch the movie, you realize only three days passed. I don't know if you know that. I was just thinking three only days three, were short. Sure. Only three days true. passed throughout the whole film. So it's kind of like you're watching a three days worth of a movie. You know, so it's not like The Conjuring where, like, this was, like, weeks spent, um, you know, spread apart, you know, where the the people who do the exorcism and stuff like that, they have to travel a week, yeah. find out, yeah. you know, the police detective work. Like, this is, like, really, like, home stretch again, because of how the story is told. It's not done through the church as right. much as the other films. Right. You know, this is more home ground, you know, home remedies and stuff like that. Again, overall... Just for context reasons, uh, Raphael is actually an outsider of the church. My thing, closing off, at least for me, when it comes to the story, is that it was good telling for what it was, but because it's connected to the Conjuring universe, I expected more. I expected way more in depth of how it's connected to the Conjuring universe, but then, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite for two seconds right now, I also don't really have a complaint why it wasn't as connected. Because you gotta remember, when you watch The Conjuring and that dude has the holy fuck demon room, that's why I call it, holy fuck demon room. <laughs> and he has so many relics mm. of like what was possessed, what has a curse on it. So like, it really gives you a general idea like, you know, not every story needs to have like a half hour to 
hour of like, oh, this is connected to the Conjuring because this was in a room for like a hundred years or something. Well, you like also that. gotta remember yeah. it's trying to be its own story. Exactly. With all that being said, let's jump into the ranking. Fuda, what would you think? What would you give it? I give it a five out of ten. Really? Yeah. Oh, geez. yeah. I was bored watching it. That's understandable. So as far as my ranking on it, I'd at least give it a solid seven out of ten. And that's just mainly uh, regarding to the character, the situation with the characters. Not the lack of story, but the lack of depth to the story. And on to race. Nino. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note, I felt like the movie was a solid 7.5. That extra five points is, I'm admitting right now, that point five is my bias in me. Because I'm letting everyone know right now, out of these two, I'm the biggest um, Conjuring fan out of everyone. I've seen every movie possible. I felt like as weak as some parts of the movies was, it still did a good job being fitting into the universe. Mm -hmm. And also another thing is that it led into something that was answered within the Conjuring universe, which I hope they played on when it comes to the next movie which is Annabelle Comes Home because this movie did something that the other Conjuring movies did not do. Again, that's why I give it a little bit of a higher ranking because again, it, it did something new with the Conjuring series. Overall, I felt it was enjoyable. I didn't really get bored and even though Joe says he had a few complaints with the uh, child services, I actually didn't have any complaints with the child services, again, understanding that the movie is taking place from the perspective of three days, I didn't expect them to be a bigger role than what it was, mm -hmm. but, and also the characters was cool, the actual demon spirit, whatever you want to call La it, Llorona. was really awesome. Reyes, say La Llorona. La Llorona. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the movie, I don't think... You know, it's a movie that I would watch over and over. I would definitely rewatch it if I'm just watching all the Conjuring films. But if I, if it's on cable, I rewatch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's a it's a nice, fun movie to watch. Um, the so, only, something that would end up on sci-fi. The only thing is that if we're gonna put this in a deeper ranking from, you know, should you watch this in theaters or should you wait for it? I definitely think you should wait for it. I don't think it's a movie you need to watch automatically unless you are a Conjuring fan, and you kept up all the movies. If you kept up all the movies, then I would suggest watching this one in theaters because it connects very, very well. With all that being said, our rankings again. I stick to mine. Five. That's just my opinion. Nothing yeah, that's five, seven, seven point five. And uh, is it worth the watch? Yeah, is it worth seeing it? Opening weekend, not so much. In closing, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Reyes uh, World TV. This isn't Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to Brutal Gunplay. BGP Games. BGP Games. And make sure you subscribe to Grave Uncut. This we'll channel. <laughs> this channel. And we'll see you guys in the next movie review.